Hey guys, we are going to look at a batch of interesting cards that is hmm, surprising, but I think they're crappy. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. These cards are way outdated. Most of them are outdated and they just don't make any sense at the price point they currently are at. Other than they are collector's items. So pick them up while they are still affordable because they may not be that affordable for much longer. We have Zodiac Rooster, one of the Zodiac animals. As we know, Zodiac Rat, which is a one black for a 1-1 one -one Swamp Walk, is very expensive. The other Zodiac animals are going to follow. And yeah, I think Zodiac Tiger has already spiked. Zodiac Dragon is expensive to begin with. Zodiac Rooster, I've seen it in the video of mine. So yeah, all these Zodiacs make sense uh, to me because it's a, the collector to me wants all 12 of them and I want to frame them up and put them in, in the office. All right, talking about one ones, Flying Men. This is a one drop, one one flying, summon flying men. I don't know if this has been changed into a pirate. I assume not but it has spiked from pennies to $13 overnight. This is not on the reserve list because I'm pretty sure it is a common. As a common, those do not appear on the reserve list. It is quite interesting because it is very bad. Back in the day, a one drop, a 1-1 one -one flyer was actually considered pretty good. Like it was very strong. I mean, a 2-1, Savannah line was a rare and it was considered one of the better rares for some time and flying men was a 1-1 flyer that people played in their decks and was not bad I mean you could stack mutation on him make him a 4-4 four four for one turn and becomes free for it you get a ton of damage early you can stack two mutations and he's a 7-7 seven seven that turn he comes out turn two and they get attacked for seven damage that's why I use them. So essentially, if you have a Raving Knight bulk, that's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, that means you should keep every single Raving Knight card you own because it's not just reserve list. It's not just on commons. It's literally 1-1 one, one flyers for one. All right, next one. McKinney Mask, let's be honest, it was a terrible set. Yes, it had Brainstorm, yes, it had Counterspell, and yes, it had Dark Ritual, but the rares were... I mean, I had Food Chain, but Food Chain didn't become good until much later. This card, look at the graph. It was probably $0.25, cents, and now it is $10. The foil was probably $0.50, cents, and now it is $51. Is this card $51? I don't know. I think the card is not bad. It is a pirate with flying and evasion, and it gets your opponent to sacrifice a permanent. Now your opponent, I'm assuming you're playing this and your opponent does, is not gonna pay free. And this is each opponent, so you could get your opponents really mad and target multiple of them and multiplayer. Overall, it's interesting, but the most likely sacrifice outlet will be something useless like maybe a land but it's a land a free two flying pirate that destroys a land it's not bad all right black knight black knight used to be the core card that every black deck wanted to play it was your two drop and white knight was your two drop for the white decks very difficult to beat the protection from white the first strike even if you took away the protection from white 2-2 two, two first strike for 2 was considered very, very good. I destroyed most of the creatures that it would go attack into. It has since been outclassed by stuff like Death Shadow, which is not a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Dark Confidant, I would say, is better because of the card draw. Uh, removal being amazing now. In the Odin days, removal was mostly black, and black removal couldn't kill black creatures. It could just hit non-black creatures, and this made Black Knight incredibly good, even against the mirror mats, right? So, 50 bucks. This is probably worth 50 bucks. I think beta, anytime you can get your hands on something iconic, 
do so. Okay. Uh, talking about 1-1 one, one flyers, we have a Alpha 1-1 one, one flyer for 11 bucks. Recently has spiked in price. Um, this is not a mystery why this is happening. Uh, the art is very iconic in my opinion. And if you grew up playing with this artwork, then you want the best copy of it, which would be Alpha or Beta. Um, people ask me, is Alpha really better than Beta? I think sometimes it is, but for most collectors, especially these lower end cards, it is what it is. Uh, there's so limited amounts of them to begin with, therefore, just the fact that you can get one or two of them, just grab them. I mean, grab them and don't don't look back. So, one one for one. I mean, this is uh, eleven dollars. Oh man, the golden age of Magic is not today. It is when Magic first started because everyone had these cards. Like, if you told me this card is worth more than most of the rares in Ixlan. And it was considered like one of the worst cards. Like not, okay, I'm exaggerating. Not one of the worst cards, but it wasn't a good card. All right, this one, one white, a uh, one blue instant. Caster may tap or untap any one land, creature or artifact and play. So it is $26. It's quite interesting that, you know, it, you look at the graph and until recently it was two dollars maybe a dollar and now it is 26 dollars what i'm going to tell you is very very clear every card in beta and alpha is going to be worth at least five dollars soon it used to be the crappier cards like twiddle and all these one ones and these things just didn't go up in price yes sarah angel and Sivian dragon are pricey for what they are the dual lands are clearly pricey and the power nine is power nine. But for the most part, these lesser cards, these very unplayable cards, in my opinion, did not were, you know, a dollar or under. Now they have all risen. They are still rising. So that is a huge opportunity if you can buy. a. So I wouldn't advise buying them one by one because conditioning is an issue. I would say try to get a collection. And now we are going to end with another one one of flying. <laughs> this video is truly unbelievable. I mean, we talked about just the crappiest cards. We talked about Rooster, and we talked about two pirates and three one ones with flying that are like over $5 now. But yes, I mean, this is a common from Portal. I'm fairly certain it is a common. And I'm pretty sure it came in the introduction deck. I remember having a lot of him. And he is summon creature. I don't know if this got changed into pirate. It does have pirate in its name. So it kind of makes sense that it would be a pirate. But it is a 1-1 one, one flying man. But it cannot. It can only block creatures flying. Which is okay. I mean portal was one of my favorite sets. And I just loved it so much. I probably have a few dozen copies of this card because I'm pretty sure it came in the introduction to two player pack. One player got Cloud Dragon, I believe. Was it Cloud or Mist? No, it was Cloud Dragon, I feel like. Cloud Dragon was in Portal. Um, and I think every starter kit came with like a booster pack and my booster pack had Cloud Dragon and it was just the best card ever. Anyway, a lot of the cards in Portal, now that I think about it, cannot intercept. Like, if they have flying, they cannot block creatures without flying. It's kind of a unique little trait in Portal. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.